today. So I'm going to do a, a recap of all the uh, AR features that were announced last week. And I'm going to try to synthesize and like give a little bit of my analysis uh, what's behind all of this. So first of all, let me introduce myself for the ones that don't know me. So Oscar Farmer, I'm an AR expert and creative technologist. Um, I'm an early adopter of ARKit. You know, I used to do only iOS development. And then when ARKit came out in uh, summer 2017, for me, it was instantly like uh, something that really made sense and that really resonated uh, with the future, uh, the way I would see it. And I uh, created then an app called Twitch Reality, which is the, the first AR Twitter iOS client. And basically, I try to, to do like a, a whole interface, as you can see, that I designed at the top, uh, which was based uh, using the framework SyncKit from Apple. And basically, I try to create a whole interface the way you would do it with glasses in the future. Um, and then I did a few other concepts, like the one below. And then uh, from October 2018 until March, so three, four months ago, uh, I was an AR evangelist in the developer relations team. And basically, I was helping um, companies or developers, uh, startups uh, that had AR apps in different regions of the world to try to help them taking best advantage of the, the current features and the new features, and also trying to think uh, product-wise as well. Uh, so first, uh, introduction of, of the of WWDC. So WWDC 21 was last week. It's the, uh, the annual Apple event uh, with all the new uh, OSs updates. Uh, there was the new iOS, iOS 15, uh, iPadOS 15, macOS Monterey. Um, I actually checked it's also macOS 12, actually. So macOS Monterey, uh, watchOS 8, and tvOS 14. And in all of this, where is the AR part, right? And actually, uh, it's a year where you can see a shift uh, towards you know, this new paradigm of you know, from 2D to 3D world uh, from like in May, one month before the WWDC, there was the announcement of special audio and Apple Music. Um, at the beginning of the keynote, uh, you could see the Memojis audience, uh, all these avatars kind of jumping around. Uh, there was also FaceTime special audio uh, now announced. So when you're talking to different people, you're gonna hear them at different locations. And this is supported by the way, all special audio for those who don't know on AirPods Pro, this one and AirPods uh, Max. Uh, there was also the live text feature, uh, which I consider kind of an AR feature, uh, considering that it basically helps you analyze uh, the text that are surrounding you in the environment, um, and uh, like copy paste, for example, and Apple Maps, the 3D upgrade. So basically, there was this whole revamp, uh, like in 3D, which is used for driving too now. And there's a lot of locations like this that were designed in 3D. And definitely, there's a whole uh, like momentums towards this shift to a 3D environment. Uh, some news as well, it was announced that there was uh, now 1 billion uh, AR compatible Apple devices. Um, so I think it's, it's quite a re remarkable number now. And I think there's four main pillars uh, from this WWDC in terms of AR. First of all, object capture uh, that Roma uh, explained earlier, uh, hand tracking uh, focus and reality kit 2, as well as AR kit 5. So the first, uh, my first pillar is 3D, is 3D content creation, actually. I went a little bit bigger. Uh, so at the moment, or at least before the WC, uh, the three main kind of tool that developer use is Reality Converter to convert assets to the USDZ uh, file format, which is, used, uh, which is the necessary uh, 3D file uh, requirement uh, for doing AR on Apple platform using the native frameworks. Uh, Reality Composer, which is a basically a scene editor where you can bring your USDZ models then Reality Kit, which is the framework that you can use in your app to basically develop AR and bring the scenes that are made from Reality Composer or the models that also you made from Reality Converter. And in all of this, there's one missing piece, assets creation, right? There's no assets creation. So I think there was two ways they approached this uh, because I, so I watched all the, the sessions that were available. And I think, first of all, this, uh, this pillar of, USDZ in DCC. So DCC are tools like uh, Udini, Maya. Maya. Someone is unmuted. Uh, so, digit, so basically DCCs are digital content creation tools. Um, and they basically put the highlight on the three that I'm gonna mention. Uh, they mentioned Multiverse USD, uh, which is basically allowing uh, you to edit USDZ files in Maya or Udini, uh, export USDZs from Maya. 
and also as a standalone editor, which you can use to edit uh, USD files. Uh, so I checked, uh, this was from last year. This is something from 2020. Uh, there was also, they mentioned Okpan Render, uh, which is uh, which has an update last year, uh, same uh, 2020, uh, which basically, so this is basically a rendering, uh, a render, a GPU render engine, and you can pl you plug in in DCCs too, uh, like UDNI, and that allows to import and render correctly USD. And the big, I think, new thing uh, that they just announced is more that Maya 2022 is going to have native support with USDC with import and export. So this is quite a big deal because Maya is uh, one of the main tools that is being used for um, 3D assets creation by 3D artists. Uh, so yeah, so now basically they really try to push as much as possible so that USDC become like a standard in the industry, uh, especially considering that I think the most common one usually on Android as well is usually the GLTF. Um, and so, yeah, they have different reasons. So if you want to go more into detail, the, 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 session, the sessions explain a little bit more why. But yeah, basically, there's a big focus on the integration in the tools that are being used today. And the other focus was object capture. So object capture was even mentioned during the keynote. So it's a really big deal. Uh, photogrammetry, it's really busy for this year. And I want to start by, before explaining this, uh, by this quote from Mike Rockwell, uh, an AR executive at Apple. And in an interview uh, to CNET in November 2020, he said, um, we put the basically the LiDAR, LiDAR sensor, so the depth sensor and the device. We felt like it was a key technology that could open up an explosion of 3D assets that can be used uh, for all kinds of things. It also opens the possibility of being able to start to scan environments in a way and be able to make it easier to create 3D objects. And even like already you see as a couple of months ago, it was already mentioned as something that, you know, that Apple has some interest in. And definitely object capture now makes sense in the ecosystem, like the in the AR kind of tool set that Apple has. Um, and I put the platform that they are supported with because sometimes it can be a little bit confusing. So object capture is actually an API that is part of Reality Kit, and uh, Reality Kit can be used on macOS, iPadOS, iOS. Um, Reality Converter is a macOS tool. Reality Composer is a macOS, iPadOS, iOS tool, and Reality Kit is macOS, iPadOS, iOS. If I didn't forget anything. And yeah, basically, I'm just doing a, a sum up. Uh, so you probably understood everything really well earlier, but just a quick sum up. So basically, you can have you the input is they recommend to have between 20 to 200 photos in the format. Uh, I think in English you say H. I don't know H I E I C, uh, JPEG and PNG uh, formats. And the companion app that you saw earlier allows to leverage the depth data as well as the location of the phone in space when these pictures were taken. And this basically then is sent to the object capture API, um, which, so this is something that I think we, uh, was not mentioned maybe earlier, but it's only supported in Apple Silicon Macs and uh, Intel Macs that have at least uh, four, the four gigabytes AMD and 16 gigabytes RAM. So it's basically only high-end uh, Intel Macs otherwise. And the resol resolution options are reduced, medium, full, and RAM. And then finally, out of this, you get this 3D model and the output are USDZ, USDA, and OBJ. So these are the three possible outputs. This is the companion app that you saw earlier. Uh, this is actually the ideal photogrammetry setup that they showed in one of the sessions. Uh, so basically, yeah, you would need basically like a, a really perfect environment. If you wanna get the best uh, 3D model, um, you know, that would be the ideal setup. But I thought it was worth showing and actually, it looks very nice. It looks very Apple. So it's always a pleasure to see. So that was all about 3D content creation. Now let's talk about hand tracking. So hand tracking. So last year, uh, Vision Framework, uh, which is the computer vision framework from Apple for iOS developers, uh, was announced to have 2D hand tracking. So basically, yeah, 2D hand tracking in, in on the screen space, but not in 3D space. So you didn't have the 3D aspect. And this year, there's a bunch of new features. First of all, there's hand pose classification. So basically you can do any gestures and it's gonna be recognized. Hand action classification. So if I do hi, or I don't know, if I do something like, oh, my head is exploding, this is a hand action. And finally, hands uh, chirality, if I pronounce it well. So basically, I didn't know this word before last week, but it means if it's right or left hand. Uh, so this is actually very useful because you can do different actions uh, depending on what you wanna do. Like you could do, oh, I wanna do something with the right hand and I wanna do something with the left hand. 
And all of this is possible. I mean, the hand pose classification and the hand action classification are possible with the crate, uh, with crate ML, uh, which is a tool that allows you to train models for the one that are not familiar with it. Uh, just a quick recap, basically with crate ML, you create your own ML model. And then basically you run it on device with Core ML. And I actually checked it's compatible with all the OSs, Mac OS, iPad OS, iOS, Watch OS, TV OS. So that can be used on a wide range of devices. So that was a quick recap. And then now basically create ML as the two new feature, hand post classification and action uh, classification. And also they announced this year that there was a new uh, feature which allows for preview on Mac. So on Mac right now, you can actually check what's the result of your model directly without having to set it on device, create an app, et cetera. You can test it directly. This is two examples. And yeah, and I wanna now do like a, an example of a, an app. Like if I was using hand tracking with different features, how would it be used today? So first of all, you use ARKit. In our cases, because we're interested by AR today. Then you get the video feed sent to the vision framework. Uh, the vision framework, for example, in that case, we're going to check right and left hand, and then we're going to do hand detection. So we're going to have a, basically a rectangle of this right hand and a rectangle of the left hand. And then we send both of these uh, video feeds uh, to the two models that we have, to it's through Core ML. So the hand, like let's say in that case, one for hand post classification and one for hand action classification. And then from there, we decide, we decide which animation and that can be in Sprite Kit, into the space, in Scene Kit, uh, the older 3D engine, and then Reality Kit, the newer one, uh, especially made for augmented reality. And this demo that I'm going to launch is actually an example that was showed uh, at WC, where it's more or less exactly done like I was explaining. So he's going to do a gesture, which is going to be recognized and is going to uh, make this movement, this animation in the middle. And then with the other end, it's going to have hand pose detection where it's going to be detected that it's one finger. And combining vision to so having like a detection of the area and detection of the, uh, with 2D hand tracking, a detection of the tip of the finger, not only you do hand pose detection, but then you also can have an animation on the top of the finger. So all combined, that's how basically you can take advantage of it. Uh, on top of this, actually, they use the AR kit feature as well of people occlusion. I think in that case, to have the background, which was a little bit sour. So anyway, so it's quite a, a trippy example. Uh, I think they try to hypnotize us to use the technology. <laughs> so anyway, that was hand tracking. Now let's talk about Reality Kit 2. So Reality Kit 2, basically Reality Kit was released uh, two years ago, at, uh, two, w, two, w, two WWDCs ago. Um, and um, actually there was a lot of advanced features that were missing. So developers really liked it, but uh, it's really easy to use. But then when, as soon as you're trying to do something like quite sophisticated, that could be a little bit harder. So this update is a major update, Reality Kit 2. And as you can see, there's a lot of new things. So I'm not going to cover everything. There's two wonderful sessions about this, about a one hour long content, but I'm going to cover, I think, three important ones that a lot of developers were asking for. Uh, so the first one is geometry modifier. So geometry modifiers allow you to move vertices, uh, uh, give custom vertex attributes. So in the case of seaweed, for example, under the water or this plant, it's going to like move wave around. And you can code those using the metal shading language, and it runs on GPU. And these are the different parameters. Uh, you don't need to learn it by heart. Uh, it's the different parameters that basically you can take advantage of uh, to when you build these geometry modifiers. There's also surface shaders. So surface shaders allow you to define the appearance of an object. Uh, you can actually alter the different uh, physical base rendering surface properties. So color, roughness, uh, metalness, metallic, ambient occlusion, and specular. And here are the parameters too. So I'll share the, the slide online as well. So you can, you can see, check this later too. And uh, finally, the third one that I wanted to mention, which is a quite a big deal. Actually, we have uh, Peter, I think, in the room today, which uh, likes to use this in SyncKit. So then you have it now in Reality Kit. Uh, so basically, post-processing effects allow for full screen effects. So this is done after the rendering of the whole scene. Uh, it takes as input the color uh, buffer and then the depth buffer. So the depth that you get from basically the, the LiDAR, for example. And you can take advantage of those to basically build uh, the effects that you want in the scene. Um, to build these effects, uh, you can take advantage of uh, three existing 
technologies, Core Image, uh, the metal performance shaders or sprite kits. And you can also build your own with uh, metal shading. So that was Reality Kit 2. Again, that was the, I think, three important ones. There's, there's a lot of other ones, but I think this was three really requested features. And AR Kit 5, finally, this one is going to be a little bit shorter because it's, uh, it's not as big of an update as actually the previous years. There's three main updates. So there is uh, location anchors related up, uh, updates uh, with uh, London support added. So basically at the moment, location anchors uh, basically are working only uh, in about 50 cities in the US, but nowhere else um, in the world. So now there's support for London. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's still, it's a step. And then now there's the AR Coaching UI. For, so those who are not familiar with it, basically AR Coaching UI is basically an animation on screen that tells you uh, what to scan around you to make sure that the computer vision algorithm have done enough uh, work so that you can have a good understanding of the tracking around you. So in the case of location anchors, when you need to look at buildings around you, uh, it's going to make an animation like buildings like move around. Um, face tracking. Uh, so basically now in the new iPad Pro that was announced this year with the one with the M1, uh, the Beast, uh, there is uh, now the cap cap uh, capability of uh, ultra, there's a, like an ultra wide camera lens. Uh, this is what you saw maybe at the keynote for, uh, for example, let's say um, FaceTime. There's this feature where it follows you in the room and you leave it. Let's say if I was going there, it would probably follow me there and it would actually go around. So the ultra wide camera is now supported with AR uh, technologies on iPad Pro. So which means, uh, which means basically that you can have a wider view of the person and use face tracking. And then finally, motion capture. Uh, has been, uh, it seems widely improved uh, with a wider range of body poses um, for a further distance. It still works with a, a further distance. And it also now has a better understanding of rotations and a better uh, limb tracking. That was all about ARKit 5. And as a conclusion, I'm gonna summarize the main points I think from the DC this year. Uh, object capture, so, takes as an input recommended 20 to 200 photos uh, as an export to USDZ, USDA, and OBJ. And it works on Mac only. Maybe at some point, some people could do it on servers and have some app, but basically it's at the moment, you only do it on your Mac. Hand tracking, uh, surality detection, hand post classification, hand action classification. Ready ticket two uh, with custom shaders that you can use uh, as I, I presented. Uh, also, you can do procedural meshing. This one I didn't show much and post-processing effects. And ARKit 5 has now location anchors support in London, ultra wide uh, face tracking on iPad and as uh, significant motion capture improvements. And for more details, uh, I recommend to check the session. So these are all the sessions I watched to be able to know as much as possible the new capabilities. As you can see, it's like a couple hours of content. Uh, these are made by amazing engineers and they made amazing content. So if you want to go in depth into any of the technologies I explained or maybe details that I didn't at the time to explain because it's a recap, I really recommend watching those. So thank you very much and happy to take any question.